DJI Power 1000 V2 is a significant upgrade on their original compact power station launched just over a year ago. It retains the same 1024 watt hour LFP battery rated for 4000 charge cycles or 10 years of use, but almost every other aspect has been improved. Most notably, it now delivers up to 2600 watts of AC output, outperforming many larger and heavier competitors. AC charging is now quicker, reaching 80% in under 40 minutes. And UPS switching is twice as fast, cutting over to battery power in just 10 milliseconds during a power cut. DJI has also introduced built-in wireless connectivity via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and upgraded both USB-C ports to 140 watts power delivery, making them suitable for high-end laptops and other demanding tech. The Power 1000 V2 is ideal for users who need a lot of power in a still portable unit. Whether you're running tools on site, powering a desktop setup during a power cut, or charging cameras and drones on the road, it covers a wide range of use cases. And for longer run times, it supports up to five 2048 watt hour expansion batteries, bringing the total capacity to over 11 kilowatt hours. In this detailed review, I'll be putting the Power 1000 V2 through a full range of real world tests to see whether it lives up to DJI's claims and to help you decide whether it's the right power station for you. So let's take a closer look. Like most of their products, DJI sells the Power 1000 V2 on its own on a number of tempting combo packages that can offer good value depending on what you're after. I have the standalone option that comes with just the mains charging cable, but I'll cover a few of the optional accessories as I progress through the review. It's a compact, well-designed unit with excellent build quality, although it has no weatherproof rating. You can see its dimensions on screen. It is a little heavier than other 1024 watt hour power stations I've tested, coming in at 14.2 kilograms, over two kilograms heavier than my go-to comparable power station, the EcoFlow Delta II. The Delta II does have a smaller inverter though. It's still carryable with one hand, which makes it so much more portable than bigger power stations, like its 2048 watt hour sibling, the DJI Power 2000 I just reviewed. The inputs and outputs and the display are all around the front of the unit, which makes it easy to use. From left to right, there are two 2600 watt AC outlets, two 24 watt USB-A ports, and two 140 watt USB-C ports below the 85 millimeter LCD display. The fast charging mains input with a charging speed switch below it, and two proprietary SDC expansion ports. I'll cover all its inputs and outputs in detail shortly. A long press of the power button turns it on and off. A short press with the power station turned on toggles a bright, clear display. There's an AC button which turns on the inverter and its two AC outlets with a short press. By default, the outlets will turn off after 30 minutes of inactivity. If you want continuous AC output for, say, an intermittent device like a fridge, press and hold the AC button. The AC light stops pulsing and lights steady green. This is all configurable in the app, but it's great to see basic control on the unit itself. Here in the UK, the Power 1000 V2 charges at over 1400 watts using the included mains lead with the recharge mode switch in fast mode. This drops to around 600 watts if you toggle the switch to standard mode, which is intended for quieter charging at night. The power station will automatically charge at a lower speed after five consecutive fast recharge cycles to maintain battery performance. I charge the power station from completely empty at full speed making sure it had completely cooled down before starting the test. The DJI Power 1000 V2 reached 80% charge in under 40 minutes, and a full charge in under 53 minutes, which is very impressive. That's quicker than DJI specifications for a full charge by three minutes, but a little slower to get to 80%, DJI quote 37 minutes. I checked the noise levels charging at full speed. It's whisper quiet, one of the quietest power stations I've tested. One meter away, my decibel meter barely picked up anything over and above background noise. I measured around 37 decibels. And the temperature of the unit only reached around 47 Celsius. All these measurements were taken with ambient temperatures around 21 Celsius. They might vary in warmer conditions. Just like the DJI Power 2000, you'll need an additional accessory to charge from your car's 12 volt output. The car charging dongle plugs into one of the power station's two SDC expansion ports. These two proprietary SDC ports are very flexible and expand the capabilities of the power station with an assortment of dongles which can adjust both voltage and current in or out. The DJI Power 1000 V2 has one standard SDC port and one SDC light port. 
The light port is designed for low power applications and doesn't work with DJI's expansion batteries, the 1.8 kilowatt super fast car charger, and the 1.8 kilowatt solar car super fast charger. But it works with many other accessories, including the car charging dongle and the solar charging dongle. The car charging dongle has a 12 to 30 volt input at up to 8 amps, but with a 100 watt maximum. Charging off a standard 12 volt car outlet in my VW camper van, the power station charges at 100 watts. A full charge would take at least 10 hours. My van has two 12 volt outputs, so you could use two of these car adapters for faster 200 watt charging. I didn't have another adapter, but use a DJI solar panel adapter, which has three 10 amp 12 to 30 volt XC60 inputs. There's a maximum of 200 watts per port and 20 amps, 400 watts total from all three inputs. Using both 12 volt car outlets, I got around 220 watts with this accessory. This would also work with a 24 volt car outlet if your car has that, which I confirmed to my bench power supply. So a pretty useful accessory for car charging and solar, which I'll look at shortly. I don't have it to test, but DJI also have their one kilowatt super fast car charger that charges directly off your car's alternator at up to 1000 watts. According to DJI, it can fully charge the Power 1000 V2 in 78 minutes of driving. Finally, you can charge off solar, but again you need a dongle. The power station doesn't have a built-in MPPT controller to regulate the variable voltage from solar panels. You can use the car charging dongle with a single panel under 30 volts. Just remove the car charger to XT60 component. I tested it with a folding Zygnus 120 watt panel from DJI, which already has an XT60 connection which plugs straight into the remaining portion of the charging accessory. In bright conditions, but with some high clouds, I got just under 70 watts with this setup. I got 80 watts in pretty perfect conditions with the DJI Power 2000 in my earlier video. So I'm sure you could get at least that from the single panel. But if you're at all serious about solar charging, I'd recommend the solar panel adapter I've already briefly covered. It is still a little limited in that it only supports panels under 30 volts so it won't work with my larger Bluetti 350 watt panel, for example. But I was able to run both the Zygnus 120 watt and my 200 watt Bluetti PV200 panel simultaneously, reaching a combined input of 200 watts. In good conditions, I'm confident you could achieve the maximum 400 watts with three panels. I did manage to simulate this maximum input using two bench power supplies. You'd also attach another solar panel adapter to the second port for a total of 800 watts but DJI also have their 1.8 kilowatt solar car supercharger. I haven't tested this yet, but it supports up to 1200 watts of solar and can also charge your car's battery at up to 600 watts. Its solar inputs are far more flexible too, at 12 to 60 volts at up to 20 amps. So it supports larger panels, or you could connect smaller panels in series. It's pretty expensive though, and to get the full 1800 watts with a DJI Power 1000 V2, you'll need an expansion battery connected. One of the most impressive features of this power station is its AC output. It has two 2600 watt AC outlets, and both outlets have a pure sine wave output important for sensitive electronics, which I confirmed with my oscilloscope. An inverter rated at 2600 watt continuous output on a power station this size is a big deal. The EcoFlow Delta II, which is a comparable unit, also with a 1024 watt hour battery, has an 1800 watt inverter. And even larger units like Bluetti's AC200PL and EcoFlow's Delta II Max I've looked at recently only have 2400 watt inverters. It can power almost anything with a plug as long as the startup load isn't too high. You will have to remember that it still only has a 1024 watt hour battery. So unless you're using expansion batteries, it won't last very long at 2600 watts. It bore this completely full kettle at 2600 watts for four minutes without any difficulty but it did use over 20% of its total capacity. Charging another power station at 1200 watts and then ramping up a variable load, it starts beeping at around 2900 watts and then cuts out at just over 3000 watts. To really put the power station to the test, I tried running some machinery in my garage. It could run my 14 inch bandsaw, which has an induction motor with a large startup drawer, which has tripped many other power stations I've tested. My Bosch 1800 watt sliding miter saw ran perfectly. This is a great use case for the power station. You don't tend to run a miter saw continuously, so you can get some good run times, effectively making a powerful corded saw sort of cordless. I often don't have power nearby when I'm using my miter saw. The only machine I couldn't run was my table saw, also with an induction motor. The startup draw was too high and triggered overload protection on the power station. 
in my office I could power my 12,000 BTU portable air conditioning unit, which runs at around 900 watts when the compressor kicks in. And again, the compressor starting up can often trip less powerful units. Since I tend to run this when it's hot and sunny, I could potentially keep it topped up with solar for longer run times. AC inverters can use a fair bit of power even when they have no load attached. By default, the DJI turns off its inverter after 30 minutes when it's not in use. But I deliberately turn this power saving feature off to test the parasitic drain. Starting with 100% charge, I left it overnight for 12 hours with no load attached. It had 73% capacity remaining, so the inverter is using around 23 watts even without a load. With a constant 2 kilowatt resistive load from an electric heater and an energy monitoring plug, I measured the usable capacity of the 1024 watt hour battery of the power station. It ran for just over 26 minutes and used 882 watt hours. That's 86% efficiency, which is a perfectly acceptable result. To use a DC output of the power station, you need another dongle. There's no usually standard 12 volt car outlet. I could run my EcoFlow Glacier portable fridge freezer. I confirmed its maximum 10 amp output with a load tester. I dropped this to 8 amps to measure the usable capacity off DC. I measured 789 watt hours, which is around 77% efficiency. Some of these losses are due to the parasitic drain of the DC subsystem. Again, by default, the power station will turn off if there's no DC load attached. But I disabled DC timeout and attached DJI's car outlet adapter for the SDC port to measure drain with an idle DC load. In 12 hours, the capacity dropped to 90%, so the DC subsystem uses around 8.5 watts. There are four USB ports on the power station, two fast charge 24 watt USB-A ports and two 140 watt USB-C ports. It's great to see 140 watt ports appearing on power stations now. There are already devices that can make use of that power, like some of the latest laptops, and I have portable battery packs that can charge at 140 watts too. Just make sure you use quality 140 watt EPR rated cables to achieve the full 140 watts. Here I'm charging my power bank at the full 140 watts and then adding a load tester configured at 28 volts, 5 amps for another 140 watts, totaling 280 watts off just two USB-C ports. I confirm the Qualcomm Quick Charge 12 volt 2 amp off the USB-A ports too. All the USB ports support pass-through charging so I can charge the power station and use all the ports at the same time. I've covered various SDC accessories for input and output, but DJI also offers SDC adapters that directly charge their large drone batteries, specifically the Air, Mavic, Inspire and Matrice series at up to 230 watts. I have DJI's Mini 4 Pro and Neo drones, but as I mentioned in my review of the DJI Power 2000, unfortunately they don't offer direct charging of their batteries, so I can't test out this feature. The SDC port can also be used to connect up to five 2048 watt hour expansion batteries, increasing the total capacity to 11,264 watt hours. The Power 1000 V2 also has an uninterruptible power supply or UPS mode. When AC devices are connected with a power station plugged into mains power, those devices bypass the internal battery and run directly off the mains. If there's a power outage, the switch over to battery power occurs almost instantly, within 10 milliseconds which is twice as fast as on the original Power 1000. I tested this with my desktop computer running an intensive graphics benchmark and it handled the transition flawlessly. I also measured the transfer time with an oscilloscope. The waveform deforms as it transfers across the battery, but I did measure less than 10 milliseconds of actual break in power, which is impressive. While not fast enough for mission critical servers or equipment requiring zero transfer time, it's suitable for most home electronics and even relatively sensitive devices. DJI also has a smartphone app that works over Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, so you can remotely monitor and control the power station. It's a little more basic than EcoFlow and Bluetti's apps, but it still covers the essential functions. This is going to be the perfect power station for a lot of people. These one kilowatt power stations strike the perfect balance between portability and power. There is usually some compromise on their output. The DJI, however, has more output than a lot of power stations that are considerably larger and heavier. There really is very little you can't run off it. And if capacity becomes an issue, you can easily extend the capacity with up to five expansion batteries, which are still fairly portable at 16.5 kilograms. I do like the flexibility the STC ports offer. I look forward to seeing what other accessories DJI release. But relying on these expansion ports does come at a cost. It's a little frustrating requiring a dongle to charge off your car or connect a solar panel. DJI does offer this case, which has storage of cables. 
and I'd consider this or perhaps a cheaper third party case an essential purchase as your dongle collection grows. If I was being picky, I'd have liked a couple of extra USB-C ports, like on the Power 2000. Most of my devices are USB-C now, and only having two is rather limiting. Perhaps they could release a plug-in module for the SDC ports with additional USB-C ports sometime in the future. Overall, the DJI Power 1000 V2 is going to be hard to beat, and with DJI's five-year warranty and established after-sale support, it should at least be on your shortlist if you're looking for a do-it-all portable power station. If you found this review helpful, please give the video a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. I read every comment and do my best to respond. So if you've got any feedback, questions, or your own experience with this power station, let me know down below. If you'd like to support the channel, you'll find affiliate links down in the description. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and tapping the bell. I release new tech videos every week. Thanks for watching.